Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Tired Metalhead Weatherman. I hope you guys are having a good start to your Saturday and the weekend. We have a little something to talk about here. I mean, I mentioned it in uh, one of my last climatological outlooks. It was the one that was try where I was trying to give us the first peek into December. But uh, we have to take that one, of course, with a grain of salt, considering that model was showing up to about 700 hours out. I really, I rarely like going above 200, if I could be perfectly honest. But I'm seeing a uh, noticeable trend here in the GFS, so we're gonna just go ahead and go right into that here. So in that last video, I mentioned highlighting the dates of the 24th, 20 through, I'd say the 27th, the 28th, and from what I've been seeing here, that uh, model trend that I've been looking at has been holding. We can get a, we also can get a little bit of severe weather. We're getting some backside snow or wraparound snow with this current system that we're looking at right now that's over the Great Plains. Oops. So we're gonna look at these storm systems roll through and over towards the 21st, that's when we start to switch over to that negative PNA in the west. And that's gonna be the catalyst behind setting a severe weather, setting up potential severe weather events around the Great Plains, especially around the Central Plains and maybe even towards the Southern Plains. So we go to the 23rd and that's when our first big storm system comes through. This could very well be our first named winter storm as well. It's going to be looking to bring heavy rain and snow to the Northwest. And then once it hits this warm sector right here, that uh, will lock, that'll also help lock in this uh, negative PNA here, this warm air is going to get funneled out to the east and then when these two collide this is what we're going to get we're going to get this pretty this uh, relatively stout storm system almost looks like it could even try and go neutral tilted which would be interesting because neutral tilted uh neutral tilted jet streams can cause pretty significant severe weather events not saying that's what is going to happen here but we can't rule out the possibility and we could also see this trend negative or positive we definitely will always want to keep our eye out for the negatively tilted events because those can often be prolific severe weather outbreaks. Some of the most memorable ones were often caused by negatively tilted troughs or trough ejections. I could go into detail with that more, but you guys haven't met the challenge yet. You guys have been coming closer, not gonna lie. Uh, there's a couple of videos out there where uh, we're sitting at eight likes on that. And for anyone that's new, there's a little backstory here a while back, I said that I was going to make little tutorial videos into like a whole playlist, which talks about some of the terminology I'm going over. You really want to keep up with that. The goal, the rule was uh, 10 likes on any video in the history of the channel, and I'll do it. Hasn't happened yet. It's up to you guys whether you really want it or not. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's get back to it. Very stout storm system just north of the border here. Energy is going to linger into the plains, though, and maybe even towards the Ohio Valley. This almost has a look like there's a storm system trying, there's another system trying to phase with it. It's like a secondary dip in the jet stream right here, which is really interesting. So we'll have to watch that really closely. And then we have secondary energy right here. So between the 23rd and the 27th, looks like it's going to be a very active period. You can see multiple storm systems heading into the northwest. And then also storm systems heading into the southwest as well. That's pretty much the setup that you would look for for this time of year. To see not just winter storms, but severe weather as well. It's a very dynamic type of setup here. And then towards the end of the month, you can also see a bit of a ridge developing over the southeast here. So we're going to be heading back into the above average temperature territory around the southeast and maybe even into the mid-Atlantic. We'll have to watch and see how things go, but this is going to be also a very flip-flop type of pattern. So we'll have to take it with a grain of salt, sweet of salt, because the weekends could still end up being cold or the middle of the week. We'll just have to keep tracking this and see how it goes. So for now, I'm more focused on the severe weather threat. I may talk about the snowy side tomorrow morning, but that depends on a lot because I have, I have some big plans tonight, so I'm going to be pretty busy. Um, but anyway, what we're going to look at here now is actually the, uh, I don't know why I had it set this far forward, 
But if we, what I'm gonna be looking at here now is gonna be the uh, mixed layer cape, and we're also gonna be looking at the wind shear. Now keep in mind with as far out as we're going here, gonna take the, gonna have to take this with a grain of salt because these long range models are not good at judging cape or wind shear, especially once you get to about maybe 150 hours out, just like most forecast models are with anything else. But if we're already, but one thing that I will take note of is the fact that we're seeing some moderately high cape values this far out in advance. We're getting into that uh, 1,000 joules already, about 186 hours out. You don't see that super often. So it is something I'm taking note of and I'll be watching very closely. And we even get some higher cape values, especially towards Texas on a Monday afternoon around the 24th. This is about, what, a week out from now, I would say? A little over a week out. So we'll be watching that area for severe weather. Storm Prediction Center isn't going to show this is because it's not within the uh, eight-day period just yet. But I do expect to see some uh, predictability too low uh, areas pretty soon, or too predictability too low days. Wouldn't surprise me if they even put up an early slight risk in advance, but we'll just have to see where it goes from there. But you can clearly see robust storm system, cold front right here. Very uh, classic fall type of setup for severe weather. This looks like towards 25th, it could be an event for the southeast possibly. Don't see a lot of cape with it just yet, so I'll have to see how that matures. That uh, develops so to speak this definitely looks like it could be a linear event on the 28th i we'll have to see how that unfolds as well but really towards the end of the month we're just gonna have to brace ourselves because the active pattern is really gonna start to kick in at this point so let's go ahead and take a look at what the uh radar could potentially look like or what our storm systems could look like more or less because like i said let's be in this far out it's just hard to really have too much confidence in this so here's our uh, here's our clipper-esque type system here, bringing in some backside snow, and some areas could see up to one, two, maybe even four inches in some areas, like the UP of Michigan, for example, could see up to four inches. Most of this snow is going to be heaviest north of the border, but not to say that the northeast is completely out of touch or has no chance of seeing any sort of snow flares or maybe even a cumulative snow. Nothing that you guys haven't seen before, nothing you guys can't handle, but it'll be, But that first snow looks like it's uh, drawing ever closer for you guys up north. And then when we go to the 23rd, or 22nd into the 23rd, here's our big storm, first really big storm system for the northwest. We see a large, we see a very big storm system bringing in heavy rain and snow. Idaho, we're looking at a nice little mixture between rain and snow. Could be some sleet and uh, freezing rain mixed in in some spots. We'll have to look at the soundings for that, but so right now, one thing I can tell you is it looks like the makings of a winter storm for sure. And then we even start looking at North and South Dakota for some snow here on the backside of this uh, low pressure here. There's plenty of cold air funneling in behind it, so it adds up perfectly. And then, ooh, we can even see the sleet just north of the border here so there's a little bit of warm air aloft right here you can almost kind of see it represented between the uh, red and the blue um, isobars here which is pretty cool to see and then towards the 25th here is when we start looking at a more um, pronounced severe weather threat this definitely has the look of a, a line of storms and then on the back side of this we also get some snow towards uh, Wisconsin and Michigan this time more towards uh, the actual shaft part if you will no sexual windows please of Michigan well actually fine go ahead and do sexual you in innuendos I don't care <laughs> but um that stout storm system moves into Canada and we don't have to worry about it anymore it anymore but we can possibly see a clipper system now maybe bringing in a very small dose of snow towards far northern Minnesota and maybe even far northern Wisconsin the UP once again then of course on the 27th our next big storm system comes through 
And then very odd setup here where we have this uh, offshore, this uh, onshore flow here setting up some showers towards the coastal Atlantic. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the model run here. It's a lot going on. It's gonna be a lot to cover. It's very interesting. Towards the end of this model run here too, take a look towards uh, even just north of the Sierras, towards Mount Rainier, even. There's a, there's a pretty nice little swath of uh, heavy snow here, so. Things are moving here. It's gonna, it's gonna be a very interesting first couple month, first, uh, well, last couple months of fall, and maybe even first couple months of winter. But, hey, I live for this kind of stuff. This is what I do. But, um, yeah, like I said, the challenge, get 10 likes to any video. I'll have a link to uh, any videos that are eight, at 8 likes to give you a fair shot. But, uh, anyways, bring it on. But this is the end of the video here. If you like what I did on any of this today, if this is affecting your area, let me know in the comments. Definitely drop a like. Share the channel and subscribe, of course, if you haven't. Also, click that bell on to let to uh, so that way YouTube will let you know whenever I post, which is pretty often anyway. But anyway, this has been Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. I hope you guys have a good Saturday. I'll see you in the morning.